I've only summited two mountains that uh, were technical in the sense, and uh, both of them I required a guide. There was no way I was going to go up to uh, the top of Mount Kilimanjaro without uh, someone who had gone there before. Uh, one of our guides had been up there over 150 times. The other one had been over uh, 200 times. So in the middle of the night, uh, all of this, these trails and steps were brand new to us. They were very common to them. And I think when it comes to our walk with the Lord, He is our guide, and He, we need to depend on Him. And we have to also, as, as professors, as pastors, as church leaders, to see ourselves as guides and how important that is to people who are coming into a spiritual walk with the Lord, but also have been around a while. Uh, I've been on several mountains, but not that one, and I needed a guide who had been on that one. And I think that's, that's true for each of our lives. I would never go up on an event like that without a group. I am convinced, and that's what church is, that's what small group is, that's what brothers and sisters in ministry are about, that we just can't do this thing on our own. God never intended uh, for us to, but to uh, live together as the church and as His people. Fitness is a lifestyle, and uh, it reminded me that to prepare for something like this, you can either build on a base or go real extreme and try to get in shape in a very short period of time. And I believe it's best um, over a long, long period of time. It's a lifestyle. And it reminded me of our spiritual walk with the Lord, that the reason we don't overcome temptation and we fail in times when we need the power of the Spirit is because we never practice, we never uh, work out spiritually. And that's why I think the spiritual disciplines of prayer and service and worship and that long line of exercises the saints have given us over the centuries help prepare our heart and our soul for those extreme uh, events that happen in our life. One of the lessons I, I learned was, uh, and it's true throughout life, is that strangely there's joy in suffering. Uh, what we did was very difficult. Um, lack of air, 50 mile an hour winds, um, below freezing uh, temperatures, wind chill around eight or nine degrees Fahrenheit. And it is, it's so, so difficult. At the same time, there was great joy in knowing that you're approaching the goal that you have in front of you. And I believe with all my heart, Scripture calls us not to run from suffering in our lives, but to embrace it as one of the ways that God molds our character, uh, exposes our character. And uh, suffering's part of life, and I believe as God's people, we strangely find not joy, not hilarity, but joy in the sense that in suffering we relate to Christ and His sufferings, but we also know God is doing something in our lives that wouldn't happen any other way. The power of the goal to say, I wanted a picture uh, with Carol Flagg, Scott Whitson, one of our graduates uh, on uh, that highest peak in Africa, that that helps drive you, and that that drove me. That was a uh, an amazing experience, and that experience satisfied my wanderlust and my sense of adventure. But uh, it was really being with the African Church the next week with Scott that really was the deepest and mo most meaningful aspect of the trip, to see God's people in where He had planted them, to be so vibrant and so joyful, 
and so engaged with his work uh, really made all the difference in the world. I want to say thank you to those who prayed for us, who supported us financially. Uh, we were able to make it to the top and back safely, and I believe that's because of one, God's good grace, but also through the prayers and the support of those who said we will give to bring theological education to Tanzania, as well as support the global students of B.H. Carroll Theological Institute. So thank you so much for all you've done.